I'm Tom, welcome to my channel, welcome to my turtle room, and boy, are we going to have a lot of fun here. So, you will have fun if you like turtles and tortoises, if you want to take care of them the best you possibly can, if you like any reptile and amphibian and just want to do better, you want to strive to be the best. That's what this channel is all about. Today on the channel, what are we going to do? We're going to take a look at a short that I created this week of one of my hingeback tortoises and her name is Lucy. Lucy's an animal that I've had for four years. I got her in October of 2018. And when I opened the box that these animals came in, I was like, holy moly, what did I agree to get into? They looked bad, to be quite honest. The story ends really well, so stick around. She's kind of dirty. I need to clean her up, guys. But she is the best tortoise. But look at that major gash, that bump, that shell deformity. It's incredible. And so you can see when I opened these animals, I thought, these are never going to do anything. I was wrong. That was not the case. And in the end, she has produced so many eggs for me. I'd have to go back to my records and look. But three solid years of offspring. And... She lives with two other males, okay? Going back to that horror story when I opened this box, look at this male's shell. This male underwent some serious trauma and stress, and perhaps it was a fire. Uh, I've named this animal Rugged. Rugged lives with Lucy all the time. I don't recommend this, but it just has worked and it has resulted in me getting a lot of eggs. We have one more tortoise in here. It's a reverse trio. This is a male. It's a beautiful male, the smaller male. This is Ricky, Ricky and Lucy. I love Lucy, love that show, watching reruns growing up. He lives in there too. This was only meant to be a temporary setup. It's a small enclosure. It's too small. It shouldn't be that small. But guess what? It's working for me. It just shows you there really aren't any rules. There are just guidelines when it comes to her pediculture. And what you have to do is watch your animals and learn and do what's best for them. And if you are not spending time with your animals to learn about them, to watch them and observe them, and come up with better husbandry techniques, you will not advance in this field. You have to dedicate everything that you have if you want to be a successful breeder of any reptile or amphibian. So that brings us to our job of the day. Day. I created a short this week that was all about Lucy. We're looking for eggs. This girl, when she has to lay, climbs the walls. And when she climbs the walls, she tips over. What I'm going to do is I'm just uh, inserting my finger into this uh, area to see if I can feel any eggs. I, I don't feel anything. I don't sh think she has any eggs and my finger is now stuck. You need to release. Oh crap, release, okay, thank you. Get rid of this garbage. Um, so we're gonna look, we're gonna look for eggs. We're gonna see if we can find any eggs. I will tell you this substrate is so easy to find eggs. Lucy lays very reliably at about six to eight o'clock in the evening and I usually spot her because that's when I'm doing the eggs. Um, so I don't typically miss her eggs. The other animal, different story. She hides them all the time uh, and, and lays them in the middle of the night. So I've got a camera on her. Um, so far, no eggs. And I, I don't think I'm gonna find eggs to be honest, but you gotta start checking. If you don't check, if you're not on top of it, if you just wait 
to see your turtle laying eggs, guess what? You're gonna miss eggs. Again, this substrate is so easy to look for and find eggs. She doesn't usually lay them near the edge at all. So I don't think she has eggs yet. I don't think she's laid any eggs, but it's just good to check. That's the whole point of this video. So let's move over to the next enclosure. It's Saturday morning, haven't done the work yet, but we'll get these guys fresh food and water later on today. And here are the two animals that look great. I mean, these things are beautiful tortoises in my opinion. Fred and Ethel, okay? These are what a tortoise should look like. Beautiful animal, um, probably keeping them slightly too dry right now. That's what happens when um, you get these little raised up lines at the carapace. It's a good sign, and I, I just, it's been too dry. But look at this beautiful little animal. There's, I have a problem with a, a pest moth that I'm dealing with, but man, aren't they awesome? Aren't they just prehistoric? I mean, look how cool these guys are. Um, very nice animal and um, a beautiful female. This is Ethel. Um, just look how big she's getting. Um, just a beautiful, friendly, nice animal. Um, how many have these guys produced? Two, okay. Um, they're in a pair. Uh, obviously not ideal compared to that reverse trio setup, but I want to keep the bloodline separate. I miss her eggs all the time. She lays late at night. I've had a problem hatching her eggs. And so for whatever reason, and, and it may be that we've got two males in the other enclosure, uh, these guys just haven't been as productive. Like literally two animals from this pair to 20 from the other pair. So. Um, it's very early in the season, however, the first homiana ever hatched is from Ethel, and she laid that egg August 3rd of 2019, so by December 1st I had my first hatchling. So it's very possible she has eggs. Let's go ahead and palpate her. I just stick my finger in this area. You notice the lights are on low. Yeah, there's no eggs in there, at least there's not a bunch of eggs. If there's a bunch of eggs, you can feel them. Um, different substrate here, guys. This is a mix of sphagnum peat, which is not a sustainable product, but I do love it, and play sand. Um, this, this has kind of become my go-to substrate. I really like it. You can grow plants in it, and... It compacts down well. It's lighter than topsoil. I probably could try cocoa, coir, and this uh, and play sand. That would probably be the sustainable choice. Just haven't done it and haven't tried that mixture. This is uh, when you get to play in the sandbox. A little trick if you do want to use plastic plants, sit them in uh, concrete. Works really well. Again, gotta clean out the food dishes from last week. This substrate's really tough. I'm not expecting to find any eggs today, but that's the point. You gotta try. You can't just say, oh, there aren't any eggs in there. Because when you do that, you just stop checking and you're not gonna produce any babies. And her pediculture is, it's all about being consistent, uh, coming up with a plan that you know will work, but not outsmarting yourself as, you're, as life really steps in, right? I mean, life can get busy, we know. But um, you have to have goals, right? Um, if you have a lot of animals like me, 
maybe you need to prioritize. I have prioritized the Western Hinchbacks the last few years, guys. I still get about 10 Holmes Hinchbacks, but this pair isn't reproducing. So guess what? This pair is the priority for this year. You know, guys, I'm going to have you be a part of this. So please subscribe. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your secrets to her pedoculture are. My basic theory is that, that there aren't many secrets. It's just that you have to be the best keeper you can. There are no shortcuts to doing this. And once you find what works for you and your schedule and your routine, you care for your animals the best you possibly can. You set up amazing enclosures, giving the animals the things they need. You get them the right food and they will reproduce for you. So we've lived here about a year and a half, very different from my last turtle room. If you watch those videos, uh, please stick around. The, uh, not all the lights are on right now, but uh, we have some amazing animals here. And like I said, we're gonna have fun. And I want us to do this together. I want you to be a part of our team that hatches, raises up these turtles. So keep watching, thank you, we'll see you next time.